champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. Champ is here. And welcome back, everybody, to Belt Kings Radios Presents Champions. And today, episode nine. We bring to you the NWA United States Championship. And as always, my name is Mike Knox, and always joining me is no other than nephew Corey. My kicks are my fix. What's going on, Corey? What's going on, man? This will like, be a good show today, too, honestly. You know what? As we always do, as we always say, doing the information, doing all the due diligence, if you will, about certain titles – uh, looking at this belt, even my wife, when she saw this, me putting together the show for today, she said, mm -hmm. out of all the U.S. belts, babe, that might be the best looking one I've ever, that I've seen. And I said, well, you mm -hmm. know, I don't think you remember the one that came after this one. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the one that Luger mm -hmm. also was most a, a, a synonymous with, if you will. So I, I think mm -hmm. I know, I know Mo Eaton has that title. Um, I know, um, I believe Rod also has that title. Mm -hmm. I do not have that U.S. title. I only have the ones that have the color, the spinner, the one Eddie Guerrero originally had, the first copy. The, you see that U.S. Mm -hmm. title now that um, Apollo Crew has, and it's not as small of a plate at all as the original mm -hmm. U.S. title was WWE brought together. But this also, Corey, during our research, is not the first NWA title. And that, I won't say it shocked me, but looking at other belts that preceded this one, I, I mm -hmm. was kind of happy they went to this this version of this title. Yeah, board. yeah, no, this one's it, it, it's a nice one. It's a nice, clean look. It, it that belt looks like the '80s. It's <laughs> not a bad thing, but that belt looks like the '80s, and it looks good. I like it. Um, like I said, look at this title. You go back now. This is a this is a title, not the belt itself. That guys like Bobo Brazil had guys like. You want to talk about the Intercontinental Belt being the workhorse title of the NWA? Well, mm -hmm. during this time, this U.S. belt was the workhorse. You had guys like Ric Flair is a five-time United States champion. Yeah. You look at it like uh, him and Ricky Steamboat went back to back. Bobo Brazil fought for this belt. Harley Race had this belt. You know what I mean? Jimmy Valen had this belt. This is a mm -hmm. title that has lineage in it. But the yeah, title in which we're talking about today, Corey, Mm -hmm. I did some more research. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a stretchy window because it, it, it looks like it here is that the first title was given to Magnum uh, T.A. after he yeah. beat Chief Wahoo McDaniel. Yeah, he I believe that's right. Uh, losing that belt to Tully Blanchard, getting it back from Tully Blanchard. Then it became vacant after he attacked NWA President Bob Gale. Mm -hmm. uh, and then coming back is where it gets a little fishy because they had a tournament for the title. Or best of seven, yeah. but it was. It was the best of seven for this championship against one of my favorites of all time, Nikita Koloff versus Magnum TA, that somehow since then, the company, WWE, has just named it a tournament. But it wasn't a tournament. I remember mm -hmm. this as a child. You cannot uh, men in black mine erase me. I saw this match happening <laughs> on television of this best of seven between Nikita Koloff <laughs> and Magnum TA. One of the greatest robberies to me that's never spoken about when we're talking about robberies and professional refs wrestling was this title. But for argument's sake, for the history books from what they're writing, because it's their history, um, the first champion of this set title which I love is Nikita mm -hmm. Koloff being the Russian uh, sympathizer that he was, the, the true Russian here to bring down the United States, Corey. Your thoughts, first and foremost, as always, on this title? Uh, design, it, once again, it was close as far as size to the World Heavyweight Championship, which was the big goal by this point. Um, but it was slightly smaller. Um, once again, leaning to that, how we've talked about in previous episodes with the uh, championship kind of signifying, you know, where you were in the ranking, like the world title was the world title, but the United States championship was pretty close in, in size, but the, you know, the, the, the popping with the stars and the stripes on there and it wasn't overdone. Mm -hmm. It was enough where it was like, okay, I know this is the United States championship. It celebrates the United States but it still looks like a championship title. So, Me, me loving this belt again, 
Um, I love when my wife can see a title and says she likes that belt because that mm -hmm. means it, it stands out differently than, you know, my eye would catch something. Um, right. It's still not my U.S. title. I, I personally would still go with the one that came after this one when it became mm -hmm. WCW's um, yeah. United States title. I even pretty much mm -hmm. like the, the NWA United States tag titles better than this title. Yeah, but I, I do. do. Too, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I do like this belt, though, and the design of this title, because I'm just a fan of, as you said, belts from the 80s to me that stood mm -hmm. out, that that eagle that had to stand out because it meant United States, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you had the, yep. you got the big eagle in there, which, you know, as an eagle mm -hmm. fan, that also worked for me also, <laughs> right? And then it has the flags on it or the flag of right. the United States on it. It just, the, the symbolicness of this title at this time mm -hmm. and looking at this belt also, Corey, it kind of remembers... Um, reminisces me or reminds me if you will so to speak a cross between wing eagle and the in, in the classic intercontinental title yeah it does yeah if you look at it it kind of does in a way uh, and what's funny is that center plate and the center plate for the championship after this one they kind of have same kind of you know small intricacies that the classic intercontinental championship has uh in the front so that uh that, that kind of tiered plating almost that it looks like so yeah no they, they were all very similar now, looking at this belt, looking at the design of this belt, say someone wants to get this belt. I'm, like I said, I went back looking at history, okay? And the United States Championship that Flair had was just a strap with literally the picture of the United uh, a plate of the United States that's stamped on it. Nothing but that. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's one ugly title. I'm so glad they went to this belt next. And I, right. I was happy that it was that who Nikita Kolov had. And I remember this, but I remember Barry Windham having this title. I remember mm -hmm. this six-year run. That's all it was with this title. It was a small six-year yes. run of this belt. And at some point, I think it was, I think it was Magnum TA. No, mm -hmm. Luger had this belt for almost two years. 523 yeah. days, Luger had this belt. Yeah. So if anybody's a Mount Rushmore of this said title, which I give him the United States title Mount Rushmore, period. If Luger's yeah. on any Mount Rushmore list that we that we will not do I was going to say that that's but, you know, funny. Put Bret Hart, it's, it's Luger. Go ahead. Yeah, I was. that's funny you say that because if there was a just overall United States championship, like, you know, Mount Rushmore, yeah, Luger is absolutely on there. The yeah. belt you give to the guy we want to be the guy that just for yeah. some reason never became the guy, right? For, for, yeah, for, for, yeah, for, yeah. Whatever I mean, circumstances. Did, by circumstances is like, <laughs> yeah. He's never really, he never really got really full runs, but nonetheless, well, he did once, but nonetheless, no. I mean, honestly, right now, and we, we, you know, we can do whatever we want. It's our show. I can tell you right now, with the small window of that that championship, yeah. the first more to me is Luger, Wyndham, uh, Koloff and Magnum TA. Those Without are question. But I don't even think it's, a, it's not even a conversation. A, a title for six years, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you look at the guys you named in, in Wyndham, mm -hmm. Luger, Magnum TA, and Nikita mm -hmm. Koloff, the Russian sickle. Those who don't know, before there was the clothesline from hell, there was the mm -hmm. Russian sickle, okay? Mm -hmm. Just like you're going to become a belt king, you got to have five titles, <laughs> not just one. So don't go buy this United States title somewhere and think you're a bell king. In my book, you got to have five. But Corey will <laughs> tell you one's good enough. And Corey, have you seen this belt anywhere? I, this is a yeah, title okay. that it's, I, it's, I personally can't think that I've seen anywhere. No, you got to get one made. I've seen people with it before. Okay. So you, you, you got to, that, that's one you'll have to get a custom job for. But, um, but no, that belt, I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice clean looking title. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's one that, you know, if you ever saw somebody with it, you'd be like, oh, Oh, that's pretty nice. You, so, you would definitely know what it was once yeah. you saw this belt, and you would know where it came from once you saw this mm -hmm. belt. And it what sure stands would. out for this title as a title collector, again, mm -hmm. is, it, is it where does it rank on my list? It's, it's really not there. But, again, we always talk about deals and coming across deals. And, mm -hmm. and, and since this show has been out, we, I get a lot of feedback, and I thank you guys out there for, for your feedback on, on, on belts and things like that, and I appreciate you uh, and asking, where do we get titles from? How do we get belts? You know, things like that. Um, hashtag Belt Kings. Well, I will say mm -hmm. this much, um, and as I said before, I will put descriptions, and I forgot last week, and thank you for the free reminder where I had to go back and add the link to FanDuel, where to find that title that, that you had from the FanDuel, and, mm -hmm. and I thank you for that, but I want to say this, guys. As collectors, please be careful. I have I get flooded and flooded and flooded and core. I know you if I'm getting flooded, I know you get flooded with people who say they will make your title. And mm -hmm. I had this one guy, and I'm gonna call him out, Corey, because I don't I think there's good business and bad business. I said, okay, let me see the back of the title. Now I kind of knew the belt was flimsy by the way it stood mm -hmm. up, right? Like the way the belt just 
the, the leather felt felt but the, the top plate's here and the leather goes like this i said okay let me see the back and he goes uh yeah okay hold on give me a second then he came back and showed me the back and it was like this watered leather that mm -hmm. you didn't see you don't see the screws like i like we instructed you if you don't see screws if you cannot customize it or customize it's not a word customize your own right. title that's a belt i'm going to suggest you don't get that's right. just me. sure yeah 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 no that's that's about right if you if you're if you're unless you're actually looking for one that's already made if you can't you know make specifications at at least within what the belt maker can do then no you, that's fine no and i just don't think there's no room out here in this epidemic of belt kings you know what i mean right. and, and taking over people just getting championship belts or championship belts and we're going to get them where we can get them from but it's about the quality of the belt and it's about having that title look like mm -hmm. the title that you that you see and that you want right and to me again what makes this belt stand out is that that smack of the nwa on top of that title to yeah. me that's what stands out on this belt as well as the two side plates it, it's something about for me Mm -hmm. The 80 side plates just are the goats of belts to me. From the TV <laughs> title with the different right. camera angles, the, the wrestlers, the, you know, the Greco Roman, uh, the, the, the corner, you know, the, the lock up mm -hmm. that they do. It's, it's something about these belts from the 80s that just stands above any other title. This is a belt, um, like I said, I will add to the list, but it's not, you know, not quite there. But in my list of NWA titles, it's about number four. Mm -hmm. What about for you? It's, a, it's up there. Um, as far as NWA titles, might might be might be number three for me. I mean, big goal. Yeah, I'm thinking big goal, television title. Yeah, this is three. Yes, I, I like that. That you. It's something about and again. Oh wait, my fault. My fault. I'm thinking of something else. I'm sorry. This is. It's behind the U.S. tag title. That that red strap. That yeah. red strap on the U.S. tag title is just really it's behind really, the U.S. tag title. Yeah, it really stands out for me. So again. I, this is a belt I don't see on this WWE shop somewhere you can go pick up. This is not you won't a belt. see the NWA. Most yeah. of the NWA ones, they don't have the license for yeah. that. So you're going to have to go to, again, who I will always plug because I'm a fan of. So you, if you're listening, you know, via YouTube or, you know, on the Facebook or, you know, mm -hmm. podcast, I, I'm a fan of Google AJS belts. That's mm -hmm. to me yep. one of my mm -hmm. top notch guys that I get my belts from, that I get my customs from or I've ordered a custom from, I don't have it yet, but <laughs> that I'm getting it from um, is at AJS. Um, and also, you know, FanDuel and, and those kind of guys. Just do your due diligence. Look at who um, I can recommend and we can recommend to you uh, to get this belt. This is about the outfit that you're looking for. Now, Cole, yeah. we did jump the ball because mm -hmm. you said, and this is going to be a short impromptu show, guys. It's, it's, the, it's the weekends coming up, guys. Um, mm -hmm. this coming, if you're looking at this episode, um, the, the holiday is upon us. Uh, and so we're going to, you know, make a little bit of shorter for you. But that's why we go. This whole entire month will be yeah, U.S. United title States month. Championships. Yeah. U.S. title month. So look forward to that as well. And you'll find these episodes and more. You see it right there below at all the podcasts, mm -hmm. all your social networks. You can get us there. Enough of all the advertisement. Let's get back into this title. Ty Corey mm -hmm. talked about the four, the Mount Rushmore four of this. Yeah. Month. Yep. Can I, can I? Very hard with you, you know, pat in the back mm -hmm. for that list, first of all, but also say, can we can we think about adding a Michael P.S. Hayes? Because I didn't know, and again, excuse the ignorance, okay? Those who say you learn something new every week, you're learning now that Mike Knox didn't know that the Confederate flag was offensive back then. Because I watched wrestling, and it was on the Dukes of Hazard, and it was on Michael P.S. Hayes. He was draped in it. Yeah. I just see oh, this yeah, man yeah. come out with face paint of the Confederate flag. The You know, mm -hmm. and I just think, for what wrestling was in the 80s, you know what I mean? And what we were mm -hmm. not educated to knowing, he was a bad shut your mouth from the bad mm -hmm. streets of USA with this United States title. I remember his run was so damn good. It, it's what it, it was, was me it was. to him being a single star. I knew about the Freebirds because I knew about them and the Von Erics. Right, okay? sure. But Absolutely. seeing him with this title and this single runs made me say, okay, he got it. I know he had it. You know, with, mm -hmm. with the free birds, but watching him solo career, I think pushed this over for me. And I think it should be a little honorable mention for Michael P.S. Hayes in this title. I mean, you can honorable mention him, but I don't think he goes on the mount. <laughs> I mean, you can honorable mention him, absolutely. Absolutely. No he, Dusty. No one. Dusty. Dusty had three I, runs with this title in his six years. I mean, with this particular – yeah, I mean, yeah, but he – they were grooming Dusty to be the guy. Nah. Over the rest of the, Dusty was already the guy. <laughs> I mean, by this point, 
You know what I'm saying? So I think, yeah, I, I think I'm sticking with my four. I am sticking with my four. The reason why I said put Dusty or, or, or thought Dusty, I, it wasn't even really to change your mind necessarily. It's just to mm-hmm. sure. uh, no, no, no. jog their memory. That match with him versus mm-hmm. Luger at yes. Starcade 87 yes. in the cage was just awesome. And then to see him win that match, come out the cage and, and, and give a big old hug to Baby Doll at the time mm-hmm. um, was yeah. just was just those matches that we remember again six mm-hmm. year run with this title. It's not really you know what I mean. And especially it's not when so Luger much had to do it, with it. Yeah, yeah when, especially when Luger had it for five hundred and twenty three days of a six year run. Mm-hmm. That that title run for Dusty to me, he, which only lasts 141 days, I said only, right? right which, he, yeah. which he loses is because he gets attacked. People remember the attack? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's the attack that I, yeah. I to, to this day made me say wrestling was real as F, as the kids would say, okay? I Tully Blanchard on this on this on this <laughs> network. We, we talked about this, okay? When they for horsemen followed Dusty Rhodes and they slammed his arm in that door was to yeah. this day the realest thing I ever seen in professional wrestling. Yeah, that was pretty bad because even with uh, it, not necessarily related with this title, but even when the Royal Warriors attacked Dusty with the spike, D- Dusty's attacks just seemed real life. Like he was really getting beat up for real. His selling of it was impeccable. It's impeccable. And then what led that into having Barry Windham get his run because the title was vacant by Jim Crockett mm-hmm. um, was they, he ended up defending in a tournament against Nikita Koloff. Barry Windham gets his first run, which he has for almost an entire year, 280 yeah. days with this belt. And mm-hmm. at this time, you had Barry, I think he had went from being in the horseman to getting kicked out of the horseman. At this point, if I can, I'm trying to remember, I think he left. I don't think he stayed a horse because Luger, ends up becoming a horseman at this point in time. Yeah. In 89. Yeah. So I think they kicked out Luger. They kicked out Barry for look for, for for Lex. I think so. I think it, it, I gotta watch it back because there's a weird there's a weird kind of timeline with Wyndham and Luger because I know Wyndham getting kicked out, he went to the WWF at that point. Right. Um Luger getting kicked out, they were kind of trying to make him a mega star. And they were trying to build Sting and Flair mm-hmm. at this point. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of cloudy with Luger and 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 the Chi Town yeah. Rumble. I wonder if the Four Horsemen was involved in that one. That's the that's the match. That's that's the match. That's yeah. the match. Uh, Chi Town Rumble in '89. That was when Luger, I think, got it back. Right. Yes. I yeah, got I, it back. I had to watch that back. I think Luger was a full fledged face by then, though. It was a full place. Okay, so then excuse my uh, thing. I just know no, I'm trying no, to remember no. that, but, but it was something with him, like you said, with him and Barry and that horseman. I think they were in a swapped at one point for that. I was wondering, was that that reason when that title run had happened at that point? Mm-hmm. Well, remember the, 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 the horseman at this point, by this point in 89, because remember, whatchamacallit, remember. Uh, Tully and Arn were gone. Yeah, already. I think the Horsemen might have been faces at this point. Okay. Because Flair had because you got to figure well, Flair was on his way. Flair was feuding with Terry Funk at this point, or it, or it's getting ready to happen by this point if it hadn't happened already. So I think I think the Horsemen were faces, it, and I don't think that there was an iteration of the Horsemen at this time. Actually. Okay. Okay. I think, that, that, Flair, that I, think Flair, I think Flair was just teaming with Sting at this point. Or not teaming with him, but he was they were they were cool at this point. You know? Well, this title, like we said, mm-hmm. um, just to go over a few, Stan Hansen. Halloween had Yeah, that. man. No, Stan Hansen's <laughs> a really good champion, man. No, he's I, I like Stan Hansen, man. I really do, man. He he was somebody, I just think, because he had, was such a big name in Japan and he mm-hmm. had established himself, there was kind of nothing for him in the States, really. But just like he had to put the U.S. title on because he was that good. He really was. And he loses that to Luger, which uh, subsequently yeah. in the Texas Bull Road match becomes the WCW United States Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. But I'm looking at Luger's runs, and they're, in, they're insane, okay, with, this, with just this. Yeah. And we're not talking about other titles that he had long runs with. 
that we're mm-hmm. quite sure he's going to be the Mount Rushmore of Mount Rushmore's for this U.S. title. I'm, I'm already stamping yeah, that right now. Same. But yeah. 210 for one run, 523 for another run, 76 for another run, 138 for another run. Like, yeah. six years. You just do the math. That was four. Yeah. Okay, it was close to four (laughs) years right there, which Mm -hmm. says point blank, this is Lex Luthor, Lex Luger's title. I mean, I was a kid, I always say Lex Luthor, (laughs) you know, Lex and Lex, you know what I mean? But um, I used to think, to this this day, the torture rack Mm -hmm. is way more impressive than than the full Nelson. That's all I'm saying. Give me a torture rack any day. That move actually hurts for real if you ever put somebody in it. Okay, yeah, it does. You're, yeah, it does. you're putting their yes, back over your shoulders. You're using your one hand on their neck and you're pulling down their leg. That was a real wrestling move in a world where wrestling moves. We're not sure how real they really are these days in age. I'll tell you that much. But although shout out to Seth Rollins for last night's draw. That was a hell of a curb stump. I'm just saying mm-hmm. <laughs> that was vicious. Yeah. Okay, but um, before <laughs> we get up out of here, though, what are some mm-hmm. of your favorite memories with this title? Oh, easily this this one I would probably have to go with this, but like you and it's funny you named it earlier. Now Dusty and um Dusty and Luger definitely for this. Like that's probably the best match for this one, honestly. Um also Luger getting it back and um subsequently changing it over to the which we'll talk about soon mm-hmm. for the United States Championship for WCW. But um no, definitely Dusty and Luger. Absolutely. I'm going with the with the best of seven. I mm-hmm. think um, if any list at all, we can put him on. We couldn't put him on the TV title. We looked for it. I couldn't find it when we did that. I've been dying to put Magnum TA on one of these lists. And this is find the list that he goes on. Yeah, because, yeah. Because, and, and I think he will go yeah. on the U.S. tag title list as well. And that's just yeah. oh, yes, yes. randomly just trying to remember titles mm-hmm. that he had. Magnum TA to me, again, was that guy. If you're looking at today's wrestlers and you look at um, Hangman Page, look no further than Magnum TA with a, you know, yeah. with a touch of Stone Cold in him. But he was Magnum TA. Um, I've never been a fan of, 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 of him who should not say his name, Mr. Ryan. So that's how we're going to go. With that, right? But he, to me, could have been a Magnum T.A. He had a look of a Magnum. You know, if anybody remember the '80s and your mom made me watch Magnum mm-hmm. P.I. You know, what I mean, Tom Selleck had the mustache, the hairy chest. He was just, he was just. But then he had the blonde mullet, a blonde mullet with black <laughs> chest hair. Come on, y'all! Mm-hmm. That was America <laughs> in the '80s. Okay, yeah. that's just what it was. And it was, it was, that was good. Yeah, everybody was. had that. And to see Nikita Koloff at this point. You know, I've been arguing about Nikita Koloff for some, yeah. for some time now as well. To yeah. me, he's one of my favorites. You bring him up all the time. He, he, I think he's so forgotten. And I know that he has gone personally in his life on to, you know, finding his faith in God. And mm-hmm. a lot of wrestlers who find their faith in God kind of step away from wrestling because wrestling the behind closed doors. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy, you know, kind of crazy business. Mm-hmm. And so I always want to pay respect, even if he doesn't, you know, hey, I remember you, my, you know, my guy, my brother in arms. I, 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 I what you, my, your memories of me as a kid were awesome. As a heel, as a face, you made yeah. me think it was okay to like heels. Other, like, okay, there's Macho Man. Who else can you like as a heel? Not get everybody was a Ric Flair guy. I get that. It is a wrestling fan. We talked about this before, Corey. There's mm-hmm. guys you don't like because who they fight. I can't like Flair yeah. and the Four Horsemen. They're fighting freaking Rick. They're fighting Dusty Rhodes. Hello, yeah. no, I, I <laughs> forget the Horsemen. Okay, that's Dusty. So I didn't. I didn't tell my, my other heel was there's Nikita Koloff, and here go this guy who single handedly takes down the Four Horsemen one right. by yeah. one by yeah. one, and when nobody was doing it. <laughs> okay, by himself, no tag team partners, nobody, just taking them out no. with, with him and his chain. Him and the Russian chain. That's all he had. Okay? And, and, his, uncle, and, his, and his uncle. <laughs> and his uncle. You know what I'm saying? Then he go a guy who's a Russian. And people understand here, I grew up in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Okay? What do you think makes Rocky IV the most popular Rocky movie of all time? Because it happened against Russia. Right? Why do you think they still get that shit today when things come? What? what, what so somebody said Russia. You just get out of there get mad in this country when you hear the name Russia. Right? Mm-hmm. So here you got this Russian wrestler. Who's wearing the United States Championship? Okay, it's like yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it couldn't be no better than that, and that's what made it even better when Lex got it, right? Because right? here go Lex, 
He's friends with, with you know, with Stang. And he's, you know, where's Stang at with this title? Ha ha. We're going to talk about that on other shows yeah, in the future. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. That. So just give it to him one more time, Corey. The Mount Rushmore for this belt, we have agreement, and that would be. Yeah, it's going to be Dusty, uh, not Dusty Rhodes. Wow, because you had me thinking of him just now. You had me thinking of him just now. No, Nikita Koloff, Lex Luger, Magnum TA, and Barry Windham. Not the Widowmaker people. Yeah, not the yeah. Okay. No, I don't know what that was. Okay. I don't, because, know what they, man. I don't know what that was. Because they because listen, they may have got lucky with gold dust with Dustin, but when they didn't call him the natural, Dustin Rose, I was like, oh, because the natural, <laughs> okay. And we'll talk about him on one of these lists coming up as well. I yeah, know no, I was gonna him. say we yeah, because yeah, we'll get into it because yeah. <laughs> I, I know yeah. Dustin's gonna get in this list somewhere. Well, hey yeah. guys. With that being said, I am Mike Knox. You can find me by my namesake. You see it right there below my name. That is Corey, nephew Corey from the Wrestling Marks of Excellence. My kicks are my fix on Twitter and Instagram, wherever uh, social media is sold. You can find us as well. So with that being <laughs> said, guys, episode nine was a short one, but it was still a good one, y'all. We out of here, y'all. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. The champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here.